This is a tree. This is also a tree. What do these two trees have in common? Wood. Welcome to Hyrule Science 8. Today I want to discuss every wooden object in Tears of the Kingdom. I've spent the past uh, while studying all the wooden objects, and today I'd like to share my findings. Before we begin, you might ask what I'm going to consider a wooden object. For this list, a wooden object will be anything that has a unique wood-like model. I'm also going to avoid objects that reuse a model from another object, since Nintendo reuses a lot of models for what are essentially the same thing. I'm also going to be talking about them in mostly alphabetical order, and also give some extra facts about them that you may or may not know. I don't know, I can't read your mind. As per usual, all data compiled in this video is found on my spreadsheet, which is uh, in the description. Yeah, we'll start with the barrel. Ah, the classic barrel. Can't go 20 minutes without finding one of these things and hoping, just hoping, to get some arrows out of them. Okay, so barrels can be destroyed by either hitting them or throwing them off of a ledge. Of course, there are other ways to break barrels, but you get the gist. Damage equals destroy barrel. You can also fuse them to make a club or generate a free ragdoll. You might be asking about what kind of loot barrels drop, though. But before that, let me explain what drop tables are. For this demonstration, I'm going to use this little guy named Gloink. He has a drop table. Let's say it's named something like Gloink Drops. Let's also give this drop table some items, like a 40% chance for an apple and a 30% chance for some mighty bananas. When we murder Gloink in cold blood, it will decide whether to drop the apple, the mighty bananas, or absolutely nothing, which is calculated based on whatever free percentage is left. So, 30%. The game can also go through the drop table multiple times to drop more than one item, reducing your chances of an item not being dropped. For now, I'm going to call these list cycles. There's probably a better name for them, but I, I can't think of a better one. Some objects in the game have different named drop tables, such as No Food and Pinecone. But the one you'll be seeing the most for barrels is Default. I won't go through all the drop tables in this video, as there are a metric ton of them, but maybe in the future I'll try to cover them. Barrels come in five flavors, but since we just talked about barrel number one, let's start with barrel number two. This one doesn't have a drop table, but because it's broken. Barrel number three, only found in shrines and are usually guaranteed to drop either one or five arrows. Except for these two barrels in my Yuzi shrine, their drop table is extremely specific for some reason. Barrel number four, this one is different to the shrine ones with a more vibrant texture. Here's the drop table. Barrel number five. It's just the previous barrel, but broken. Barricades. There are three of them, each serving the same purpose. To be a, a barricade. Fusing to a weapon makes a guster, but for some reason when fusing to a shield, the front of the barricade faces the opposite direction of the shield. Nintendo, please fix. Baskets are a neat little device that goes a little underutilized in my opinion. The easiest way to get one, from what I've found, is to do Impus Scouting Quest and attach the balloon so it resets to the ground. The balloon in this state will be stuck to the basket, so to despawn it, activate it until it expires. Then you're free to use the basket. Behold! Basket Club. We'll discuss boards now. See these two boards here? Pretty similar, right? You might even say they're the same object. That is in fact not the case. This is where we hit the first instance of reused models. And in case you think I'm lying about these two boards being different, here's footage of me taking the quicksand board to the normal board. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't lie to you. Board number one. It is... Long. Oh, and fusing makes a guster. Board number two. It is... Small. Board number three. It is... Square. Okay, you get the joke by now. Board number four. These are found specifically in Hyrule Castle. They can be taken outside of Hyrule Castle too. There are only three in the game, which kind of sucks considering their unique look. Board number five, a sky version of the first board. Board number six, sky version of the second board. Board number seven, sky version... Man, who made this script? Onto the boards inside of shrines. There are six types in total, with many being only used very few times. Shrine board one. This one is found inside of Wow Oss Shrine, and is the only instance of it being used in the game. Shrine board two. Found in plenty of shrines, I know this board looks extremely similar to board number 5 mentioned earlier, but the top and the bottom of the model is smoothed ever so slightly in the shrine version, making it a unique model. Shrine board 3. This one is a big boy version of shrine board number 2. Shrine board number 4. There are only 4 of these in the game, all found within Tuckerock Shrine. 
These ones are also one of the very few boards in the game that become a club instead of a guster. Probably from how small they are. Shrine board number 5. There are only two of these in the game, found in Magowak Shrine. These ones have a pretty unique appearance compared to most boards in the game. Shrine board number 6. There are only 8 in the game and are found within Sufumim Shrine. Which is a proving ground shrine. These ones are connected to rafts and pillars, making it a bit tricky to fuse with them since they're connected to the pillars. Then I realized that I can just break them with a smasher weapon, and I was wasting my time with the bombs. Again, this board has a pretty distinct appearance, so I wish we could have seen more of it. So now I want to talk about the final type of boards, which are Korok boards. Yes, these are fusible, and yes, they do look ridiculous when fused. There are three types. Big, big but snowy, and small. These are dotted around Hyrule for Korok puzzles, but you may be surprised to hear that there are only eight of these puzzles across the entire game. I personally thought there were going to be a lot more of the board Korok puzzles before doing research for this video. Also another detail is that the big boards make gusters, but the small boards just make clubs. They're too heckin' small. With boards wrapped up, we move on to boats. There are only three fusible boats in the game. Yes, three. They're all found on Tanoko Island, and no, fusing one to a shield does not let you shield surf on water. Literally unplayable. Now for bomb barrels. First up, we have bomb barrel number one, bomb barrel number two, and bomb barrel number three. Wait a second, they look the exact same- Okay, let me explain. These three bomb barrels do share the same model, yes, but they have a different explosive damage value. For number one, it's 12, for number two, it's 40, and for number three, it's 80. So if you ever felt like bomb barrels did seemingly random amounts of damage, this is your explanation. The three types are pretty scattered around the map, so there's no way of fully knowing how much damage a bomb barrel will do. Unless you, like, blow it up or look at it online map. The best advice I can give is, uh, don't blow yourself up. For shrine bomb barrels, there are only two variants. One does 12 damage, the other does 40. The last bomb barrel is a timed bomb barrel. There is only one type, and when hit, they will go on an 8 second timer before exploding for 40 damage. The timer, of course, can be bypassed by fusing to a shield. These can be found on the surface, but there aren't nearly as many as there are in the depths. Columns. There are two of these, which are found in... Sifumim Shrine again. These have fairly unique models, but are never used outside of this single shrine. Fusing doesn't do too much either. Unfortunate. So, if I were to ask you how many log types in the game there are, what would you say? 12? 20, maybe? Uh, okay, so technically that number isn't true. There are actually 63 unique logs in the game, with 18 of them being model reuses. Now, I'm not going to show you every single log in the game, since I value your time and my time, but I will give some additional details about logs. So, when you chop down a tree, it makes a log, right? Makes sense. Chop it again, and you get some wood. What exactly are the drop rates for wood? Every single normal log in the game has the exact same drop table, and thus the same chances to drop a specific amount of wood. So this huge pine tree has the exact same chance to drop wood as this tiny apple tree. The drop table is a 100% chance to drop a piece of wood, and then a 20% chance to drop either one or two extra pieces of wood, along with the original. However, we're still not done with logs, as we have Evermean logs too. There are three different types of Evermean logs, and usually appear to be normal logs. However, they have a different drop table. They have a 100% chance to drop two pieces of wood, with a 50% chance to drop between one and two extra pieces. Except for this type of log. Evermean logs from the depths can't drop wood. Sad. With logs out of the way, lumber. I, I, I don't know what tips I can possibly give. They're just literally long pieces of wood. President Hudson Cutout. Found in Terrytown, I expect most of you know about this object already. But if you don't, now you do. Rafts. Okay, so there are three rafts in the game. All of them do pretty much the same thing. Raft number one. This one is only found in the depths inside of Yiga camps. This one is also extremely fireproof. Raft number two. This raft is only found inside of our particular shrine. Guess which shrine that is. Go, go on, guess. That's right, baby. It's Sufumim Shrine again. Raft number three. This one is very similar to raft number two, but raft number three has some additional braces on its model to hold up the columns, whereas this one does not. Ring Garland. These are found at Kakariko and are sold by Coco. It's only five rupees, but trying to fuse one before buying just gets her to ask you to buy them. Behold, 
Ring Garland Pot Lid. No one can withstand the power of the gar- Sales are a pretty neat object. Let me just go over and- uh... Sails are a pretty neat object, applying force to whatever it's attached to. Depending on the wind direction, of course. You can also use fans to apply force to sails, letting you make some interesting contraptions. I tried using sails to make my own contraption like this, but I, I suck at building. Sail number one has an appearance of being aged with some tears, and sail number two is in a mostly pristine condition. Signboards are up next. Yes, signboards. You might be wondering how these are feasible. Allow me to show you. This doesn't have any practical use, but it is funny to be able to fuse these to things. Signboard number one is often used for crossroads, telling you where certain roadways lead. Signboard number two is found near any Hudson materials, with the text, well, chilling out Hudson's company. Hello, would you like to join Hudson Construction? Hello, yes, would you like to join Hudson Construction? You, ma'am, would you like to join Hudson Construction? Signboard number three and number four are only ever used in Hateno Village. The former is for this crossroads, and the latter for the school. I am become signboard. Spikes. These are used pretty sparingly in the game, and there's not really much I can say about them. However, they do have a unique property of damaging enemies when you block a hit from them, so long as you're close enough to them. This is a feature that not many items in the game use, so it's cool to see it here. Tumbleweeds. Yes, I am counting these as wood. I, I, I don't know what else they would be. These little balls of probably wood actually have drop tables. It's a 5% chance to drop 1 to 2 spicy peppers, a 3% chance to drop 1 to 2 flint, and a 2% chance to drop 1 to 2 restless crickets. When you burn them, they will also drop a charred spicy pepper instead, which I would show you if the drop rate wasn't so low. Just, just, just trust me on this, okay? Onto wheels. Wheels are pretty neat. There's only a single type in the game, sure, but it's one of the few objects in the game that acts as an axle at its center. Is, is it an axle? I'm, I'm not sure. Someone correct me in the comments. I wish we got more wheel-like objects in the game that acted like this, but we'll work with what we can get. Last on our list is wooden boxes. There are 12 types of them too. Box number one is pretty basic and found all throughout Hyrule, so no surprise there. Number two is found in Gerudo Town with a fancy logo on it and is fairly small compared to most boxes. Number three is the Sky variant, usually found in... I don't even need to say it. Number four is found inside most shrines and does look very similar to box number three, but the brackets are different, making this a unique model. Shrine boxes also drop absolutely nothing, ever. Sad. Number five is typically found within the Elden region, marked with white diagonal streaks. Number six is found in the Varen region, wrapped in leaves. Number seven is found in the Gerudo region, covered in some tarps. Number eight is also found in Gerudo town and is basically the big version of box number two. And I'm just now realizing how spoiled the Gerudo region is with box types. Number nine is found in Laneru, around Zora's domain. I like this one the most because of its unique design. Number 10 is found in the southeast region, typically near Lurulin village. Number 11 is found in snowier areas covered in animal hides. And finally, box number 12 is found inside of Tadarok Shrine, and is much bigger compared to other shrine boxes. Ironically, its model even has the word small in its name. Uh, I don't, I don't know about that one, chief. Alrighty, now for the drop rates. Most wooden boxes in the game, at least on the surface, use the drop table arrow. However, in the depths, many of the boxes have the drop table minus. Now you know why so many boxes in the game drop single arrows. We now have some miscellaneous drop tables for boxes too, like Secret Base, which is used for Yiga camps in the depths, and some region-related drop tables like Tabantha and Gerudo. And that wraps up all of the fusible wooden objects. I might have gotten some things wrong and missed some few wooden items, so as per usual, don't take all information at face value. But wait, there's still some runtime left. That's because now I would like to talk about the non-fusible wooden objects too. I know I started this series to generally only talk about fusible objects, but it's my series. I do what I want. So the first wooden object on our list is the wooden chest. There are two kinds in the game, a normal version and a Zonai version. You can actually destroy wooden chests to get the loot inside if you don't want to open it, which is pretty neat. Ezra's Raft. This is a raft that belongs to, get this, Ezra. It's associated with a quest, so it can't really be relocated at all. If you finagle it around enough, you can actually get it out of the water, and you can even set it on fire. And I'm confident that I'm the first person to get this dialogue before the quest even starts. Sasan's Raft belongs to Sasan, and is associated with the quest True Treasure. Upon finishing this quest, the raft unfortunately despawns. Sad. Bridge piece. 
This one is near Paquita's Stone Grove Tower, and is meant for taking this Korok to his friend. But I have some... other ideas. <laughs> now we have the Sand Seal Sled, which can be purchased from the Sand Seal Rental for some extra rupees. I've never really messed with this before making this video, so it was cool to realize that this is basically its own vehicle. Terrytown Rail Car. Moving or breaking the rail car will cause it to respawn, but you can attach Zane devices to give it a boost if you want, which also means you can auto build them. This did, uh, this did not go how I wanted it to. Wagons. There are four of these, and there aren't really many wagons in the game, but wagon number one can occasionally be found near stables. Wagons 2, 3, and 4 are associated with the fairy quest line, and act as a sort of stagecoach for the musicians. They're all very similar to each other, but have some slight differences to make them stand out. Finally, wrapping up the non-fusible objects, we have the Lookout Landing Board, which is part of a quest that is only accessible after doing a single dungeon. This board is meant for the quest to help repair the stable, and is basically a glorified board Korok puzzle. And uh, yeah, that's all the wooden objects basically covered. I may have missed a few, which I... Hope I didn't, because I checked like 20 times, but if I did, oh well. All footage was recorded using Yuzu Emulator, and I used a freecam mod to get a majority of the shots you've seen. I can't really specify which mod I used because I fear the Nintendo-sized shotgun pointed at me. I'd like to give a huge thank you to the Tears of the Kingdom research team for letting me use some of their data from their spreadsheet as well. Otherwise, this video would have taken me like three years without their help. Thanks for watching, please like and subscribe, and I wish you a good time zone. Oh! <gasps>